Hey, everybody. Alex Cohen here, along with Sarah Sadwani. It is the latest edition of the Inside the Issues podcast. We are so happy to have you here with us today. Once again, so much to dive into. Uh, Once again, a lot brewing at City Hall. We are going to hone in on Katie Young Yaroslavsky, meeting some of her first real big challenges as a new city council member. Absolutely. And we cannot let this week pass without honoring the icon, L.A. icon, Gloria Molina. We're going to have have it all here for you. Also, uh, budgets. It's the, the never-ending saga of the budgets in L.A., the budgets in California, and a really awkward moment that everybody is talking about. <laughs> Let's just dive into it, shall we, Sarah? Yes. Okay, so the Bulgari Hotel. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, so if it's Bulgari. Is it like Bulgari? Bulgari like the, Hotel. Like the fancy jewelry yeah stand? Is yeah that what it, is? it sounds sure. like it i think so we don't know and yes. that's not really the important no. part but let's just say the important part is there's this proposed hotel development in benedict canyon mm-hmm. an area that residents who've been there forever say this is so not the place to put a hotel right. uh, this week it came up for vote. this proposed hotel is in district five uh which is now the district formerly belonging to paul Koretz, currently belonging to katie young yaroslavsky it went in front of the council this week and man oh man oh man wow what a showdown yeah what a showdown well let's back up a little bit right so this this proposal was one that has started back in 2017 so this has been uh in the works for many many years uh and had the support of paul Koretz originally and has a lot of support from various stakeholders, including some of the folks who live there. Yeah. Um, and the motion that was brought before council was not just an up or down, does this move forward or not? Katie Young Yaroslavsky on the campaign trail last year had had vowed to stop this project saying, look, this is in the Santa Monica Mountains. Yeah. It's an environmental degra- degradation. We don't need more, more uh, constructions up there, especially ones that are just for the wealthy. Um, it's a fire hazard, right? Like all of the things we need to make it stop. Um, So this was a motion to stop the planning committee uh, from moving this forward, because otherwise the planning the planning folks are still looking at it. They're still developing the environmental plan. But stuff hit the fan, let's just say (laughs) (laughs) yeah, Yeah. at, at city council this week, because the other backers of this plan are not only the developers that are, are building it, but also the very powerful uh, labor union Unite Here. Yeah. Uh, so we had a lot of labor folks in council chambers saying, hey, this is an opportunity for good jobs, union jobs. We already have the deal. This is a city that is almost completely inaffordable for most working folks to live in. Mm-hmm. And this is an opportunity to, to have more great labor jobs. Um, so there's a real divide. And it came down to a seven to seven vote. Oh, that, sorry. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And I'm glad that you yeah. said it. It's so funny that you said that, Sarah, because that was honestly like when I read through this, that was the thing that struck out first and foremost yes. to me was seven, seven. I'm like, damn, when was the yeah. last time that I saw that even of a split on a city council vote? Because yep. sure, these days there are some things that maybe one or two people say that they don't like or one or two people say that they do like and everybody like. Split right down the middle yeah, like that rare. is really extraordinary. Really rare. And I think some interesting things poking around a little bit today. Yeah. Uh, the developer of this is uh, the na- has the name Gary Safadi. I hope I'm saying that yes. right. Or correct. Safadi. Safadi, yes. Yeah. Bulgari, um, Bulgari. Yeah, well, who knows? But but uh, let's call the whole thing off. Yeah. So Katie Yaroslavsky. Sorry, <laughs> Except I Except it's there. not going to be called off, right? No, like, no. It's okay. moving the forward developer. as of I'm right sorry. now. The developer said, this is a real shame, right? There is a process to review these plans. And you're trying to stop that process midway rather than letting letting the process actually move forward, right? Yeah. Like having the environmental checks, doing all of these things. So the interesting piece about it, there's so many interesting pieces. Yeah. I looked up today. Turns out that this developer, of course, has some money in his pockets and is a donor here in Los Angeles. Oh, what a surprise. Uh, what a surprise. To Interestingly, you. to Marquise Harris Dawson on mm. the city council, who actually mm-hmm. voted with Katie Young Yaroslavsky to end and stop this this uh, this mm. plan. So that's an interesting one. Yeah. The other person he has funded is is uh, Curran Price, who voted 
uh, against Katie Young Yaroslavsky to advance the project. And I thought that was a really fascinating one. Curran Price, of course, having that tough uh, reelection bid. He's in a district, you know, that is 64 percent Latino CVAP, citizen voting age population. Yeah. So, you know, lots of reasons why he might want to, to either continue to get the support of this developer, to continue to get the support of Unite Here and the workers that, that are that that can bring that kind of support at the ballot box. Yeah. as well. Uh, there's another interesting yep. thread to this, which is, of course, we mentioned this is uh, Katie Young Yaroslavsky's seat now, previously held by Paul Koretz. Right. And apparently part of the argument that uh, Yaroslavsky was making was mm -hmm. that there was some shadiness with how this whole thing came yep. to be, with some allegations that there was a staffer in Paul Koretz's office who was married to a lobbyist who was working on behalf of this project. Correct. But then when they went to that former staffer and that lobbyist, they yeah. were like, what? Yeah, what? So the, the LA Times reporting, Sean Bayless was the planning deputy for Koretz back in 2017. Um, this is all starting in early 2017. It seems like uh, his wife, Stacy Brenner, who was a registered lobbyist for the project, came on board in um in March, but it's around that same time that Sean Bayless takes a leave of absence from Paul yeah, Koretz's paternity leave, for right? paternity leave, yeah. and then formally leaves Koretz's office in May. So it's kind of like, I hear the concern about corruption, and absolutely, we should always keep an eye open for that. I mean, in terms of transparency, I don't... It feels like there's no there there, right? Is that when your you, strongest you, case? Yeah, yeah, is that your strongest case? And and so it's kind of interesting because throughout the debate, you see them talking about it's an environmental concern, it's an ethical concern, it's it's for the wealthy, right? Like it's 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 all bad. We just like, don't wait, like which, it. Which one is it? Like which yeah. what which one? And is it could it? be all yeah. of them. It could be all right? of them, but you know, here's all the reasons yeah. we don't like yeah. it. Well, yeah. And so in general, I think Katie Young Yaroslavsky is having a tough time right now. Last week, she had had some blunders around some forty one eighteen. Uh, motions uh, voting against 4118. Uh, this is the ordinance yes. where you can, uh, you know, remove people, remove encampments or within certain distances exactly. of things like daycares, schools, things like that. Exactly. So she voted against it in council while at the same time having actions in her district to move homeless encampments from one area to to another, yeah. <laughs> or into affordable housing, um, so so a lot of lot of difficulties I think for her there, and I think this this week really showing kind of her newbie status to some extent, right? Yeah. That that she wasn't able to get the support that she had hoped to get, and I think what's so interesting about that seven seven is typically those vote counts are done before they reach the floor, right? Yeah. The council was there till almost four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you know, t typically they're done by what, 12, one o'clock. Yeah. Um, so a very long day to not end in success. You would typically think a, a more seasoned politician might have, have, done more of that work behind the scenes before bringing it before yeah. the council. And yeah. it kind of brings us to the segment that oh, we yes. do. I don't know if this is the perfect example of it, but I think this is an entree. So let's yes. go there. It's a segment we do every week called What's the Word? The word this week, Sarah, is purity. Purity, which, purity. you know, is open to interpretation, which yeah. is one of the reasons why we chose it. But I think, you know, that sense of purity is what is your pure mission? If you yeah. come in as a politician saying, I'm going to be the one who does X, Y or Z, then there's this expectation that you are You're going to do, do yeah. X, Y or Z. And the most beautiful example of that in many ways when we really saw this week uh, getting talked about a lot is the late city council mm. member, the late legislator, yeah. the late L.A. County supervisor, Gloria Molina, who we knew this was coming. We've talked about this before. She was diagnosed with terminal cancer a while back. So there's this been this big lead up. But the fact that she passed away on Mother's Day yeah. just was so poetic and pure in a sense. Right. And what we're hearing this week is all these incredible tributes and testimonies to the work that she did. And that was what got us yes. talking about this word purity because I know the morning after the news broke that she passed away, I was listening to LAist and I was hearing people call in and there were people 
weeping, you know, yeah. as it was like when John Lennon got yeah. shot, which I yeah. remember. And it was yeah. like, people were like, I didn't know this person, but oh my God, they meant so much to right. me. And the purity of her mission and right. the purity of her fight, I think really stood out to a lot of people, maybe in part this because we don't yeah. see that much of it yeah. anymore. Yeah, I think that's right. I think it was, it had, it's been a really interesting week because the term icon is getting thrown yes. around a yeah. whole lot in talking about Gloria And Mone. Chingona, but uh, icon, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> Uh, which is which is this beautiful tribute. I was actually talking with some friends from the immigrant rights movement, folks who have been around for a long time, saying, oh, interesting that she gets to be an icon today in 2023. Mm -hmm. And a friend sent me an article from the L.A. Times in 1993 mm -hmm. uh, looking at, at the kind of coverage that she received at that time. Right. Gloria Molina was known as a firebrand yes, she uh, was. who, you know, wasn't going to put up with anyone else's baloney. Um, and she was really kind of a, a, a of portrayed as this angry Latina and a rabble rouser at that time. So it's kind of fascinating mm. now. After her passing, we see, you know, all of these tributes and this real shift and change in, in terms of people's approach. It's just fascinating uh, how things can change over time. Absolutely. Yeah. And I actually, I, I felt very fortunate this week. I had the opportunity to speak with former city council member, former county supervisor, Zev Yaroslavsky, who was telling me he spent so many, I mean, like, Upwards yeah. of 20 years serving with right. Gloria, Gloria Molina, he said, you know, there were some weeks where he easily spent three times as much time with her than he right. did his own wife because of how much they worked together. He shared some lovely stories. A lot of people know Gloria Molina was a big mm -hmm. quilter. She, when Zev retired, um, made him a quilt that was a crossword puzzle. Oh, One side wow. was clues about him and the other side was the answers. I mean, it was just extraordinary. We've got great pics. We will put them in our show notes so you can check them out. Um, but he talked about the fact that she was just just an extraordinary fighter, as yeah. you mentioned, Sarah. Let's take a listen at what he had to say. You know, she and I uh, were legendary in terms of our our, our our battles that we had. We didn't always agree on things. And when you got into a battle with Gloria, even if you prevailed, you had scars at the end of the battle. She was, she was incredibly tenacious, uh, didn't back down. And Sarah, I I've been thinking a lot about what he said and just the purity of like it or not, Agree or disagree, Gloria Molina was pure in her yeah. beliefs and, you know, who she showed up to be. It yeah. seems like I have interview, interviewed her a couple of times. She was always that same person. And I wonder if that's part of who she was. I also wonder if that's part of our media landscape, yeah. because I see politicians today who know we're not living in the days of three television channels and right. one major newspaper. There's TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and cable hey, news. Fam. And all right, hey, <laughs> exactly. And I've seen a couple of yeah. politicians who shall rename nameless but you know who you are, will show up and talk to me and be a totally different person than they show right. up to on Fox News sure. or, you know, on TikTok or whatever. And I yeah. find that really fascinating. And on the one hand, I think that's incredibly strategic and a smart move yeah. because if you're trying to get the most votes and the most allies, you cater you to target, each particular yeah, you crowd. You target your content. But I think some people just like the authenticity of knowing Gloria is Gloria is Gloria. Yeah. Alex is Alex. Or Sarah yes. is Sarah. No matter where yes. you are or what time it is, you're getting the same yeah. person. And right. there's a certain purity or consistency to that. That goes along with that. that Absolutely. I wonder about. Yeah. I know. And have we lost that? Or are we, are we losing that in this right. era of... of, of of cultivating your, your content, right? I mean, I hate yeah. to even say it that way, but I think that's how most people think about it these days. Uh, and I want to hey, go fam. back to what you were saying about <laughs> legacy. Um, and speaking of yes. which, Eunice's beautiful tribute yeah. this week in city council to Gloria Molina, as well as Monica Rodriguez, mm -hmm. who many people see as the modern day firebrand. Yeah. Kevin De Leon, who got called out by Gloria Molina when <laughs> Gustavo Ariano of the LA Times went to talk to her, he was free. He said, even yes. when she hated me, like she was just amazing. Yeah. It was an interesting moment. Yeah. Uh, but when we talk about legacy, I've been thinking a lot lately about Senator Dianne Feinstein, who we've been talking about a lot lately, and there's a bit of an update in case you missed it. Um, LA Times reporter Ben Oreskes uh, saw her and had a very, yeah. less than a minute long chat with her, asked her how she was doing. Uh, she complained a bit about her leg. And then uh, he asked, you know, yeah. uh, feeling good to be back. Yeah. And she said, I've never been gone. Yeah. And he thought maybe that meant she was working from yeah. home. Right. And she got kind of a little bit bristly with him. And it's like, right. no, no, I've been gone. Like, know what you're talking about, right. buddy. I've been here. She says, I've been working. And he's like, ooh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> and then she says, please, either know or don't know. I don't know what to make of that that comment. But 
It's it's not going. It's, well. it's been it's very viral. Well. A lot of folks yeah. have opinion. What's interesting is most people in elected office want nothing to oh, yeah. say about it. Saying, yeah, talk yeah. to the medic on Capitol yeah. Hill. I'll tell you, Sarah. It just so happens where um, I interviewed one of the leading Alzheimer's researchers mm. here in LA recently at UCLA, and I asked him, I'm like, what do you make of this Diane Feinstein right. situation? What he told me that I thought was so interesting and maybe even more interesting than anything any politician or analyst has said <laughs> is that. When people are suffering cognitive decline, because we don't know, right. obviously, right. does she have Alzheimer's, does she not? But there's been lots of allegations of cognitive decline. When people start having that sort of deterioration, they might be able to do some things incredibly well and other things not at all. Mm. And if you try to talk to them about the cognitive decline, there's a lot of defense around right. it, which makes it even harder to diagnose. Right. And hearing that, thinking about this tape... yeah. It was something. It it sure was. It sure was. And I, I do worry. I mean, there's so many pieces of this, uh, you know, the, the political aspects of is she going to be able to continue in this position? The the, the important role that she plays uh, um, on the Judiciary Committee, but yeah. also in a very uh, slim margin majority Senate. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do worry for her in terms of that legacy. She was known as a trailblazer, um, as a purist in many ways to a, a moderate politics. Yeah. Um, she was always seen as a more moderate Democrat. Um, and I do wonder, do you, are you losing that legacy yeah. the longer she stays in yeah. and, and these stories kind of come come to come out? Yeah. How that story ends, yeah. we don't know. Same is said for the budget situation. Of course, as we talked about last week, it's budget season. Uh, so let's do a quick update. City Council weighing in yeah. on Mayor Bass's budget. Uh, so far, it's kind of sailed through. We'll know more yeah. later this week. And I think the interesting purity piece here is yeah. there's so many folks who have you know, rode into office saying, uh, we're going to defund the police. And will they be able to stay pure to that uh, to to that uh, calling that they are a mandate that they brought it brought with them? Uh, because, of course, Mayor Bass has asked for more funding for the police for LAPD. Yeah. Um, how's that going to land? You know, what where where will will folks fall? I, I generally think this is all going to move forward. And I know yeah. I totally yeah. agree. Like our yeah. podcast will drop shortly before yes. this. And I feel pretty con like I yeah. don't think extraordinary things yeah. are going to happen or anyone's going to double right. down. And I talked to the mayor, as yeah. we mentioned last week on the pod. I talked to her um, last week about this. And um, we talked about this meeting that she had with Black Lives Matter LA. And it's a fascinating um, a situation to watch because the person after person was like, we don't want this. The city doesn't want this. Mm -hmm. We've done all these surveys. No one wants more police. And she was like, yeah, except for the people in the parts of the city. Yeah. Who do? Yeah. And she said in like this complete maternal way of in a very pure moment, like, <laughs> I'm not just your mayor. I'm the mayor for everyone in right. the city. So there was no backing down. There was no like quietly edging. She was very pure in her yeah. mission. I believe that safety is priority number one. Yep. We need more police. And I'm not wavering. Yeah. I'm not budging. You can hate me for it all you want. She right. didn't say that. But that was my kind of interpretation <laughs> right. of it. So fascinating to see. Right. I think you saw that same purity and consistency uh, with Governor Gavin Newsom, mm. who, by the way, side note, Mayor Bass, Daryl Steinberg, um, gosh, Farrah Khan from Irvine, uh, let's see, Sheng Tao of Oakland, I'm trying to name Sam Licardo of San Jose, basically all the mayors, Rex Richardson, yes. Yes. all Long the big Beach. mayors of all the cities got together this week and said they like posseed up <laughs> against the governor saying we need more money for a homelessness, yes. which is a fascinating thing that hopefully we can dig into yep. at a future time. The governor now, we talked about last yeah. week, facing a growing budget deficit. The new number is close to $32 billion. <laughs> dollars right. and he knows too that right. that might not be the end of it because right. people are filing their tax returns late because That's of flooding right. in wildfire exactly. because there could be a recession right. any minute right. now right there's right. all of these reasons so he's trying to be pure and transparent mm -hmm. around this is my budget Right. Yeah. Um, it right. could get a lot worse. Not easy to do, though, when you have many different conflicting priorities from a budgeting perspective and you're facing this large of a downfall. Yeah. A lot to see how it's going to play out. One more thing, <laughs> Sarah, that we would just be so remiss if we didn't talk about uh, Eric Garcetti finally confirmed to be <laughs> ambassador to India. He's there and Looks he's like making he's living a great life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's living it up. Let's check it out. Namaste. I'm Eric Garcetti, and I'm deeply honored that President Biden has appointed me 
as the 26th United States Ambassador to India. And I'm thrilled to return to this amazing country to represent the American people in service to one of the United States' most consequential relationships anywhere in the world. Namaste to you, too, Eric Garcetti. <laughs> All right. Namaste. I mean, it was pure Eric Garcetti. It sure was. For sure. sure. But especially as, as an Indian I, person, I, I, Sarah. I, I, I think LA Magazine had it when they said, it's cringy. It's kind of cringy. Uh, who is the audience for this? I mean, let me I'm introduce clear. That's a great you question. Uh, to myself and all of my accomplishments. Is Doing the audience this, filming myself in the parks of yeah, India? That was right. the moment I, that I just didn't get. I don't understand. Is this for Californians? Is it for Americans? Is it actually for Indians, like folks who want to get Is it for Eric Garcetti? Or something? Is it just for Eric Garcetti and, and his like comeback tour from India? Uh, cleaning up his image. I don't know. It left me with so many questions. Who is the audience? You know, watching The Diplomat recently with Carrie Russell. New show. Check Haven't it watched. out yes. on Netflix. Really great stuff. She becomes the ambassador to England and is on her way to the vice presidency. I'm not, these are no spoiler alerts. It all happens in, in episode one. But I, I'm left scratching my head. Like, if it comes to nuclear war between India and Pakistan, Eric Garcetti is going to be the, the guy to help broker those deals. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. <laughs> because what you see in the videos, him doing Bollywood dances. Yes. He's having chai. chai like, giving giving the film like a little up to the chai wala. I was like, oh, what nose. are you doing? Yeah. 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 Um, Enjoy it, Eric Garcetti. India is a beautiful country, and we're so happy for you. Namaste. Uh, that's it for our episode, but I want to give a quick shout out. You know who you are, a great person in local politics who reached out this week to talk about uh, how much they're enjoying the podcast, shared their thoughts about what we should cover. Uh, our DMs are open, so totally. get in touch. Let us know what you like. Tell your friends about us so yes. we can have more people enjoying the politics party. I am at Alex Cohen in L.A. I'm at Sarah Sadwani. See you next week. The Inside the Issues podcast is a Spectrum News One production. Hannah Kokish is our producer. Nathaniel Leathers is our editor. The executive in charge of production is Jeff Shore.